Good morning again. Welcome back to New Center's Political Brew. We're here with Phil Harriman and John Richardson. One of the most emotional issues taken up by the legislature this year is the so-called Death with Dignity Bill, which allows physicians to help people end their lives if there is no hope of recovery. Uh, this is something that has been tried before and has never come across the threshold of, of being passed. Uh, it's a narrow vote this time. Still not clear what the governor will do as we talk about this, but why, where, why now and why, where does it go from here? This bill, Pat, was in the legislature back when John and I served together in the last century. It got close to passing and, and didn't make it. Um, the conversation, of course, is about no one wanting a loved one to suffer at the end of their days, but it also, to me, puts uh, other people in the position of deciding when your life uh, is no longer worth living. And I, that's a place that I personally would not want to be, even though the medical community is trained in helping people die with dignity, that's a very difficult place, I think, to put another professional in. John, have we seen an evolution in the way people think about this, or just strictly politics, and we now have uh, politicians in the governor's office and the legislature who may be more sympathetic to this? It's a social issue. It's, uh, it's an evolution. I mean, we have seen this with, for instance, gay rights and gay marriage and other issues that have come up where perhaps the first or second time uh, it took a while for Maine people to decide, hearing more about it, whether or not they would agree with this kind of this kind of uh, uh, legislation. I think it's time. I think this is something we've had Oregon look at this for some time. We've had other countries look at this. I think we've been able to work um, uh, on the proper legislation and the proper safeguards. And I think this is one which, which will be passed and will be signed. Uh, the House has killed a bill that would study whether the CMP transmission line proposal would actually reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But the House has approved bills that would force local approval of the corridor and make it harder to take property by eminent domain for similar projects. John, uh, this seems like a recipe for a big showdown between Democrats in the legislature and Governor Mills, who is a big supporter of this project. And you forgot another uh, entity, and that is Maine people, who overwhelmingly oppose this. And I think that's why the legislature has decided to give local control uh, to, uh, to those cities and towns who are impacted, and even those who aren't, and let them have a say. I, I think if, if we don't do, if we don't have these kinds of bills in place, and if they are vetoed to try to make the CMP corridor go forward without legislative input, I think you're likely to see a referendum here uh, in the near future. This is one of those issues, Pat, that is going to be, like you described, it is going to be a showdown. I don't know for a fact, but I will be surprised if Governor Mills doesn't uh, veto it. And that's just going to add to the end of the session hysteria. The temperature's rising outside, it's rising inside, the budget has to get balanced, and this issue is lurking along with others. This is going to be a very interesting it, showdown. And it adds to the argument that the legislature should have done something, and yet now the citizens have to take uh, control of the uh, process. We'll see if we get there. Last Thursday, the world marked the 75th anniversary of the of D-Day, the invasion to liberate Europe in World War II. NATO is one of the institutions that was born of that alliance so long ago. President Trump has frequently been critical of NATO. Um, Senator Susan Collins, who was in Normandy along with Angus King on Thursday, told me that she was pleased that in his speech, President Trump praised the veterans and the soldiers who gave so much, but also did not criticize France, did not criticize NATO. Uh, the question is, Phil, does this shift any kind of, uh, does this represent any kind of shift in President Trump's approach to the importance of these alliances? Let's hope so. Uh, I thought it was a proud day for the president himself. It was a proud day for the world to see that we've not forgotten what happened 75 years ago. Think of what had happened if Nazi Germany had prevailed, what type of world we would live in today. That truly is worth celebrating, and I thought the president handled himself well. I think his criticism, NATO Pat, is more about who pays for it and the logistics of it as opposed to the pact and its meaning. Okay. John? I don't say this very often, but I thought the president during that speech looked presidential, and I thought he got a, gr a lot of great. Wow! I know. Mark this in your calendar. Wow. He you got a lot. Of, he got a lot of credit both from Democrats and Republicans <laughs> yes. for the way he he handled himself. I'm hoping this is the beginning of of his attempt to act presidential in those moments that matter most. They all matter. They, they do indeed, but this yes. this certainly is a big one, yes. and the world was watching. Yes. And so, uh, finally, let's get to our winners and losers in politics this week, John. Uh, my loser this week, unfortunately, are the um, homeless in Portland. Uh, we can't find a place for them. Uh, they've been tossed around. It's very unfortunate. Uh, these people have as much dignity and right to life and right to respect as, 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 as certainly um, uh, I do. I think the uh, winner of the week uh, was this week. 
uh, is I think that uh, uh, Janet Mills uh, has done a fabulous job in about four or five of the issues that have come up more recently in the legislature. Her, she, her administration deserve a lot of credit for kind of bridging the gap and bringing people together, which is what a governor should do. My loser of the week, Pat, is, is uh, Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. On one side of her conversation, she says the president shouldn't be impeached, and on the other side of the conversation says he should be in jail. That's my loser of the week, very clear. Uh, the winner is President Trump for all the reasons that you said in your last question. He uh, represented the historic moment of D-Day and, and uh, uh, the NATO alliance and the United States of America, he did it proudly. Yeah. And, and I think we would say the winner of the week also is, for all of us, is the uh, those the greatest generation who right. gave so much. Right. Right. And to that, gentlemen, thank you. That's Political Brew for this week. Thanks for being with us. New Center's back after this.